Everyone loves a good comeback, especially when that comeback involves a game studio who, 10 years prior, was the laughingstock of the industry. I'm of course referring to Taeon, a small Polish developer who gained notoriety when they made Rambo the video game. A game that took Sly Stallone's macho action series and reimagined it as a crappy rail shooter. Neither critics nor gamers liked Rambo, but five years later, Taeon got a second chance when they made the 2019 sleeper hit Terminator Resistance. A Fallout-esque experience set before the films, Terminator Resistance wasn't a critical darling, but it was adored by gamers and Terminator fans alike for its love and respect for the series. The game elevated Taeon from a one-note studio to a scrappy underdog, and people were excited to see what Taeon would tackle next. We got our first taste in 2021 when a teaser dropped for Robocop Rogue City, a game based on Paul Verhoeven's bloody satirical Robot Jesus movie. As someone who loves Robocop and who loved Terminator Resistance, I was hyped. After 16 plus hours of Robocop and Crooks, I can safely say Robocop Rogue City is 2023's AA Game of the Year. In a year that has seen banger after banger, the new Robocop is not only a fun, violent send-up of the movies, it shows the talents of a studio who makes the most of their AA constraints. What it lacks in polish, it makes up for with ambition and heart. This dangerous new guy in town seems to have his eye on doing business in old Detroit. Your filthy hands off me! Shut I'm sorry. Uh, there seems to be a, 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 a... Disturbance? I'm a big fan. Now move! Set between the second and third films, Rogue City follows Robocop, a deceased police officer turned cybernetic law enforcer. A huge crime wave has struck Detroit that's been spurred by the appearance of a big bad known only as the new guy in town. Robocop takes on the street scum and the corporate scum known as OCP, who's keeping a close eye on Robo after his man-machine conflicts jeopardize a hostage situation. So here's the deal, Robo. The old man is not happy with your performance. Instead of sending you to the scrapyard as I suggested, he wants to fix you. Hey, pretty boy. You sure know how to make an impression on the ladies. The best way to describe Rogue City's story is as Robocop 3, but good. While it bridges the gap between the two sequels, the Ryan and Tone do a solid job replicating the satire and drama the series is known for. Fans will love how the story answers questions like what happened to the old man and what Robocop did about the nuke still being distributed after Kane's demise. For everyone else, it's a well-written tale with some strong character moments. It's also packed with fan service. Lots of it. You can tell Taeyeon did their homework with the amount of winks and nods they've crammed in here. There's the obvious stuff like repurposing classic one-liners as achievements, or Robocop doing his famous gun twirl after clearing a room full of bad guys. Locations like the police station and steel mill are near-identical recreations of their film counterparts right down to the little things like the wide exterior shot of the police station that acts as a level transition. But it goes further than that. See this gas station? At first glance, it seems like calling it hell is just a copyright loophole, but it's referring to a split-second gag from Robocop most viewers might not have noticed unless someone pointed it out. You'll come across the infamous room where Alex Murphy was gunned down and find references to products like Magnavolt and the SUX 6000. I want to drive a 6,000 SUX. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. I could go on and on about all the Easter eggs, but if I did, this video would be two hours long. What I will say is Robocop Rogue City's constant winking and nodding never felt forced. Barring one instance near the end, the fan service felt justified and enhanced the experience instead of hindering it. Kind Shepherd, Love that one. You know that movie could have never happened. The director threw out the script after reading a couple of pages. Thankfully, his wife picked it out of the trash, and after reading it, she forced her husband to give it another look. Everyone deserves a second chance. What makes Rogue City's plot so interesting is the narrative's emphasis on cause and effect. In Taeyeon's Terminator Resistance, the game featured a choice system where characters like or dislike you based on your actions. How much you helped them affected their penultimate fate at the end of the game. Robocop Rogue City expands upon this concept. How much you help Detroit impacts the public's perception of Robocop. If you uphold the law, 
You'll be seen as a cop doing his job. If you serve the public trust, people will be more inclined to support Robo. These decisions go so far as to determine which mayoral candidate comes out on top. Characters Robo meets will think differently about him depending on if he helps them or not. A good example is this reporter trying to expose OCP. You run into her several times during the story and can choose to help her or prevent her from completing her task. What is your question? After doing all that, why is no one celebrating? That is not why we do this. What a thankless job. Actually, maybe that's a story worth pursuing. Robocop Rogue City's cast is a mixture of old and new. You have familiar faces like Robocop and his partner Lewis, joined by new people like douchebag businessman Max Becker and the rookie cop Ulysses Washington. The game's writing does a solid job capturing the essence of the characters we love and making the new characters interesting. Robocop is still an ass-kicking cyborg, cleaning up Detroit one creep at a time. Aunt Lewis is here, and while Nancy Allen didn't reprise her role, her replacement does a great job not only sounding like her, but capturing the tough tomboy attitude of the character. I also enjoyed the new characters. Max Becker is a classic 80s douchebag. This Michael Keaton lookalike is not a big fan of Robocop and wants to replace him and Detroit's police with his own life robot policeman. We have to be on the lookout for Antonovsky. Do you ever just stop? We won, so smile. Okay, don't smile, creeping me out. The scumbag businessman is joined by criminal scumbag Wendell Antonowski. If the last name sounds familiar, it's because Wendell is the brother of Emil. You know, this guy. And he's not happy his brother's dead. Wendell's way of dealing with Robocop is by messing with his mind. Using a chip implemented by OCP, Wendell can tap into Robocop's brain and conjure up visions of his previous life as Alex Murphy, causing Robo to struggle with who he is. I was honestly surprised by how much the game delves into Robo's psyche. There are several surreal moments where Robo's perception shifts between real and fantasy, and you're not sure if he still has a hold of himself or not. It's a key aspect of the story and a driving force behind the choice system. Do you believe Robocop is a man, a machine, or some combination thereof? It's an element that made the first movie great and something the sequels lack. So it's nice to see the game take its time to explore this concept. Through our time together, I've learned a lot about you. And one thing I know for sure is that you're not some kind of soulless OCP robot. Why do you think so? Could a machine create a real bond of friendship such as you and Officer Lewis have? Do you think a machine would bother to help a drug addict believe that there is a place for him in our society? Do you think a machine could teach a newly appointed officer what it means to be a real policeman? Or bring comfort to a suffering old man? What an actual person, Glitch. Although I like the story, it has its issues. This part includes spoilers, so skip to this point in the video or there will be... Trouble. Trouble. My first issue is how little screen time Lewis has. While she's better written than she was in the sequels, she spends most of the game off on the sidelines after she's fatally shot by Wendell. I think they missed an opportunity to further develop the relationship between her and Robocop, though the new cop Ulysses makes up for her absence. The old man is here, but where's Johnson? This is more of a nitpick, but I find it odd how the old man's right hand man is completely absent. Though it's never confirmed, my theory is he was finalizing negotiations with the Kanemitsu company from Robocop 3. This could look bad for OCP jumps. Scramble the best fin team we have. Going back to the old man, we find out he's dying and using his power as CEO, he greenlights Project Afterlife. He does this because he's become fascinated with how Robocop still has his humanity, even as a machine, so he figures he can do the same. Yet for reasons that are unexplained, his brain is put into the Robocop 2 unit, which makes him go haywire because he's in a robot that was built for the brain of a drug-crazed crime lord. The lack of an explanation feels like an excuse to have a Robocop vs. Robocop 2 rematch, and while the fight itself is a fun showdown, it's also the one instance where the fan service backfires due to the lack of context. You've done more for this city dead than anyone has alive. That has to count for something. Uh, I'm gonna shut up now. 
RoboCop Rogue City is a shooter with RPG and crime-solving elements. As the titular RoboCop, you'll clean up Detroit by shooting up goons and helping the people. You're not a grizzled soldier or hardened space marine, you're a seven-foot-tall robot cop armed with a pistol that turns criminals into salsa. When you're not lowering Detroit's male population, you'll complete various quests and issue the occasional parking ticket. RoboCop may be a walking tank, but he's also a police officer with a job to do. What do you want, cop? Can't we have a little bit of fun? We did nothing wrong! Your volume control seems to be broken. Leave it! That's brand new! I've only stole- Playing as RoboCop is both familiar and new. Because he's part man, part machine, he doesn't move as fast as your typical FPS protagonist. Each step he takes leaves a loud thump, and his sprint is less a sprint and more a light jog. Taeyeon did an excellent job recreating RoboCop's lumbering nature. He may be slow, but he's powerful and can shrug off bullets no problem. Robo's equipped with his trusty Auto 9, aka the Saucer Maker. Each shot blasts chunks out of goons, rips their limbs off, and pops their nuts like popcorn. Not since Bulletstorm and Saints Row has a game like RoboCop Rogue City celebrated the art of the nut shot, and the game encourages you to inflict as much testicular assault as possible. You win. Firefights turn crooks into cream cheese and your surroundings into a tattered mess. While some objects are stubbornly invincible, there's still an impressive amount of environmental carnage and physics mayhem on display. Besides its Auto 9, Robo can use other guns like SMGs, assault rifles, and even the infamous Cobra Khan assault cannon. Unlike his Auto 9 though, they can't be upgraded. If shooting isn't enough, you can use Robocop's physical prowess to do things like turn CRT monitors into shot puts or cave in a thug skull with a well-placed punch. Paul Verhoeven would be proud of how this game emulates the ridiculous, bloody violence of his movies. Splattering punks never gets old, and the inclusion of extra mechanics like skills and weapon customization gives the combat some extra legs to stand on. Don't act like you're all that impressive. With all that fancy tech, a brick would know how to shoot. Robo earns XP from killing bad guys, collecting evidence, and completing missions. Because OCP is keeping tabs on him, He's graded at the end of each mission for how well he does and how many missions were completed. The better you do, the more XP you'll earn. Experience earns you points, which are used for the game's in-depth skill system. There's a huge assortment of skill trees to specialize in, each of which has abilities and perks that are unlocked once you reach a certain tier. There's the usuals like increased health or extra damage, along with more unique ones like a slow-mo ability or the ability to regain health by using a fuse box. You can even reset your skill points if you want to try something different. This extensive customization extends to the Auto 9. By finding PCB boards and OCP microchips, you can do things like boost the gun's damage or the amount of gore. Yes, I'm serious. The RPG elements build off what Taeyeon did in Terminator Resistance. That game featured a similar skill tree and customization system, and this feels like the next evolution of it. The chips and motherboards give you a reason to search every nook and cranny, while the evaluation system provides an incentive to stray off the main path as much as you can. Antitrust laws are there for a reason. Shit, Maurice! All we want to say is that you violate the basic rules of the market with your predatory pricing. We can't just go along with that. It's unfair and unethical! Not to mention illegal. RoboCop Rogue City is an open world, per se. It's more a linear game with sandbox style environments. The most common locations you'll visit are the police station and downtown Detroit, with visits to one off locations like the steel mill or a bank. Levels are incredibly detailed and are littered with things to do. There are main missions, various side quests, and minor activities like stopping vandals. The conversation system plays an integral part during these optional tasks as you can either choose to uphold the law and give them a ticket, or serve the public trust and let them off with a warning. Because I'm a goody little two-shoes, most of Detroit's vandals were let off with a warning, but not always. Are you blind? I'm the guy from that poster, so here I am. Now, give me the money. I will have to detain you. 
Fine, but I still get the reward, right? No. You cops don't appreciate honesty. If there's one issue I have with the levels, it's how often you revisit locations. You visit downtown Detroit at least five times during the campaign. Sure, the time of day is different, but it doesn't hide the fact it's the same level at night. It used to be a thriving neighborhood. Nothing like what you see right now. I always dreamt of turning it into the most prosperous district in the city. A new heart of Detroit. Can you imagine? Or do you think it's just an old fool's pipe dream? One of my concerns going into Rogue City was the enemy variety. Previous Robocop games primarily pitted Robo against Crooks and the occasional Ed 209 or Terminator. Luckily my concerns weren't warranted as the game features several enemy factions. You start with the Torch Heads, then take on bikers, prisoners, robots, and hired mercenaries. Each faction features the typical rank and file goons, plus unique enemies like suicide bombers, snipers, and guys who can radio in reinforcements. On normal, the game is a cakewalk, but on hard, enemies are aggressive and grenades spam like during Call of Duty World at War. Playing on hard pushes you to make the most of Robo's abilities, whether it's making a quick escape with Dash or using a scanner to highlight targets of interest. The enemy AI isn't always the best, as there were a few instances where I was able to cheese through encounters, but playing on hard offered a tough but fair challenge. <laughs> By and large, Robocop Rogue City is satisfying. The moment-to-moment -moment action is exhilarating, and exploring Detroit was more engaging than I thought it'd be. But like any corporate product, it has its defects. The big one is the replay value, or lack thereof. There's no New Game Plus option available. Once the credits roll, that's it. Given the game's RPG elements, not having the option to replay the game with your skills and inventory carried over feels like a missed opportunity. This next one is more of a nitpick, but I wish the Auto 9 sounded a little more like its film counterpart. The default firing effect makes the gun sound weak, though the full auto upgrade gives it more of an oomph. I played Rogue City on the PS5 and graphically, it's impressive. It does a great job capturing the urban decay of Detroit and the 1980s vision of the future. There are no flying cars, but there are plenty of CRTs and floppy disks. The character models look pretty good, especially Robocop. The metal has that distinctive sheen and his movement is stiff but graceful. Each step he takes shakes the endgame HUD and you can hear his inner workings crank whenever abilities like Dash are activated. However, there are cut corners. Character models are recycled frequently. It's not uncommon to talk with someone only to then encounter that same person being reused as a pedestrian. The in-game animations are a mixed bag. Sometimes it's decent, and other times they're as stiff as a robot. I also ran into glitches, but it was minor stuff. The most frequent one was how enemies disappeared in a puff of blood if I killed them from a distance. I guess it implies Robo is so powerful that he makes his enemies disappear. The sound design is solid. While the Auto 9 sounds underwhelming, the rest of the guns and sound effects are great and enhance the endgame carnage. The voice acting is hit or miss. Peter Weller reprises his role as Robocop, and while I can tell he's much older, he hasn't lost a beat. The rest of the cast is another story. Some sound good, and others sound like they're having... Trouble. Reed sounds like they grabbed some dude off the street and put him in the booth, while the old man sounds like someone doing a bad old man impression. The music is great. When the iconic Basil Polidorus theme kicks in during the opening mission, I got major goosebumps. Much of the music remixes Polidorus' work, and it's all well done. The only problem is there's not enough of it. There's plenty of music during combat, but almost none during exploration or even some of the cinematics. Case in point, Is he going to arrest me? No, it's your first offense. So he'll let you off with a warning. Right? 
Right. It's funny how the last real Robocop game was over 20 years ago. Excluding MK11, it's surprising how it took so long for another studio to take another crack. But given how the last Robocop game was as fun as being gunned down by Ed 209, I can understand the hesitation. I'm happy to say Robocop Rogue City is good, great even. It checks off the boxes you'd expect from a Robocop title. Excessive violence, wanton satire, and gratuitous dick shooting. But then it does some things I didn't expect it to. It's got skill trees, dialogue choices, and optional side content that impacts how well you do your job as a robot cop. Taeyeon could have taken the easy route and made a simple Robocop shoot 'em up, but the fact they fleshed out the gameplay like this turns Robocop Rogue City from just another licensed game to a damn good game. Rogue City may lack the polish of a big budget title, but what it does have is lots of ambition and lots of love for the source material. Taeyeon has arguably created not just the best Robocop game, but the best entry in the franchise since Robocop 2. Some folks will say 2023's Game of the Year is Baldur's Gate 3. Some people will say Tears of the Kingdom. But for me, Robocop Rogue City is the double-A Game of the Year. Robocop Rogue City gets a I'd buy that for a dollar out of 10. <laughs>